It is time for us to settle down at our new base, this desert, which doesn't look terribly exciting. This might be modded Minecraft, but it kind of looks like a regular desert, right? With the exception of that thing, what's going on up there? <laughs> it's a slime island. So, we are, of course, part of the base buddies, and many of you have been asking, when are we going to join our other base buddies and settle down in the desert? The time is now. I reached a point where I'm ready to move out. I have a plan. And we are going to start working on our base, which I am incredibly excited for. Now, if you don't know about the base buddies, this is our continent right here. We have Efo over on this side, Iska at the top, my buddy Rendog on the right, and in the middle we have the Ziggurat, which I have completely forgotten about. But the truth is, I have been quite sick lately and unable to stream and do other things where I would have been working on that Ziggurat. So that's something that we're going to do with time. Now I chose this place initially because of the slime island. I wanted to build a vanilla style farm over here where we took advantage of slime spawning on here to make a farm as opposed to using a spawner like we have been doing with other mobs. That's a project we're going to come back to at another time and I'm really excited for that because it's really cool to do vanilla style farms. But right now we're going to get set up and start work on our base and I need to put down some storage, some items because I have brought with me Practically everything that is valuable to us, right? So inside these sacker holdings, we have chests full and full of valuable items. Let's have a look. That's not very valuable. That certainly is. One of these is our Ender IO chest. That one is our loot from... Jeez, like the first thing that could happen. Here's me settling down in the middle of the desert thinking, it'll be alright, magma cubes can spawn here, there's slimes nearby, but nothing explosive. This is, a, this is a warning, this is a reminder that this game can be dangerous and we don't want creepers crawling out of a cave and blowing up our stuff. <laughs> uh, but the, re the real thing that I wanted to show you is just how much we could take in one journey. I mean, I could have put these sack of holdings inside one of these and then picked one of those up, right, I think. I think it allows you to do that. And I've also brought some of our storage along with us as well. So we have these modular storage things back at our base. I decided to leave them there for aesthetics. I kind of wanted to leave the place intact, so to speak. But now what we can do is drop our storage back into these machines. And we've brought everything that we've got so far with us in one simple trip. But as you saw a moment ago there with that creeper, we have a priority, and that priority is to secure the area of mobs. So I've got the means to make some torches, we're going to place those down, and we're going to secure a perimeter here for our base. The moon is rising in the sky, and that means it's the perfect time to show you what's going on here, because at night time, this place looks really great. <laughs> uh, you can see that I have neatly placed all of the torches, they are five blocks apart, which will satisfy many of you, and that means there is one spot in the middle which is light level 8, and mobs won't be able to spawn there. So this place is nice and mob proof for now, however magma cubes are still able to spawn, which is slightly annoying. Uh, we've got a cactus farm going on over here, we'll talk about that in a moment. The thing that I wanted to talk about was the landscape, because over here you'll notice that I've cut into it a little bit, and that's because I don't want this to be very hilly, I want it to be relatively flat. Um, we're going to do a lot of building in this area, and I feel like hills will get in the way. So I'm going to terraform this as we expand outwards. Now my goal is to sort of take over this territory out to somewhere where the crosshairs are right here. You know, we're going to go out quite a fair way. We're not going to go all the way out in this episode, but I will do a lot of terraforming. So this is probably the highest that the land is going to go, and I want all of the inclines to be relatively smooth. So this bit right here is probably quite steep in comparison to what we'll do elsewhere. And this bit over here on this side is just going to get torn down completely. And there is some sandstone over here, and I remembered that we have the swapping ones. This thing is really cool. If we shift right click on sand, we can then swap the sandstone floor over very quickly. And this is just one of those moments where there's little jobs you've got to do, like, you know, fill it back in with sand so it all matches up, and modded just makes your life so much easier. As it has done with digging away all of this, of course, we've got the excavator and the hammer. Uh, but what I'd like to talk about right now is the law of this place. So we will have buildings here and we're going to have a build palette. I've actually started to put that together over here. And this block is the Midori block and this is going to be the heart of our build. Now I've been watching a lot of Good Times with Scar and his live streams and he talks about building tips and what he says is it's a good idea to have some sort of lore or story behind what you're doing and I really want to use this Midori block along with sandstone and a few other blocks as well so the lore behind our building is that we're going to have like an ancient civilization 
that farm the cactus to make Midori and that's how they live off the land and that's how they make their buildings so it's going to be a prominent part of our build theme the green color and that means that we'll have cactus farms around the place so I set one up really simply I just thought you know what if I plop these down put a block on the edge to clip the cactus so when it grows it pops off with a vacuum chest in the middle uh, it's just going to suck up all the items isn't it so the range covers all of this area as you can see and a perfect example it just pops right off and goes up to it so what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll develop this a little bit further and this will be like a uniform farm that you see in the area so there'll be several of them and there'll be like a little tower in the middle so we kind of hide the vacuum chest a little bit and then that sort of making the law come to life in our world right we've got these buildings they're using the Midori block and then there's farms around to get the Midori block because that's kind of the backstory of our civilization so to speak right and here it is the first of what I hope will be many Midori farms I am very pleased of how this one turned out actually because it's pretty much what I envisioned for it and the only thing I'm struggling with is maybe the lighting and the tower in the middle. So the lighting is just torch spam at the moment. As we find more of the stuff in the mod pack, I'm sure that'll change. And the tower in the middle, rebuilt this several times. And this, I think, is my favourite design out of the ones that I did. Still something looks a little bit odd about it to me. It might be that torch sitting on the top. But one thing I thought is if we swap this uh, vacuum chest in the middle around, we can actually run conduits below it, and that means we can automatically and easily take the items out of this thing without it being too visible. So very happy with that. There's a little bit of cactus popping off and flying into the middle. The build palette here is fantastic. The Midori and the sandstone, love how they look together. And I think both green and yellow work well with brown. And so we've got this brownstone in the farm. This is a block we're going to be using a lot in this area as it will be our path block to connect things together. So over here we've got some rough brownstone and then on the inside we have smooth brownstone. You can get this stuff by smelting that. Now the recipe for this requires redstone and I'm all out at the moment so I've been doing some uh, some branch mining underground to get redstone and anyway over here is our expanded build palette so now we've included the brownstone for paths on the ground and for building we're going to use this as well but look at these textures I love this because the color and the style of texture like it works every single time but it gives you a load of options so if that's the color you wanted to use in your build you can change up the texture and give it a fair bit of variety so I think we're going to get a lot of positives out of this one right here I've also got another texture we're going to be using this is basically a form of clay like if we go in here you can see it's called yellow hardened clay tiles so you make this by crafting clay into that type right so I visited a mesa I mined a load of that stuff and I tried to include it in this over here but I felt like we weren't mixing the colors correctly when we use that one we're probably not going to use Midori um, so it'll be sort of like one or the other and obviously this one will be favorable and not that it really needs to be shown but we've expanded all the way over here so a little bit of terraforming has been done on the side of this so it isn't just a flat wall for now a lot of that right there is going to go in the future and over here when I was digging there were loads of slimes falling down from up above so I threw down some cactuses put in a vacuum chest and we didn't get a lot but it was uh, definitely worth doing and maybe this is how we'll end up farming them in the future just putting cactuses around them but that's something I'm going to deal with another day so it's time for us to start work on the central building, the one that's going to be the heart of this area. It's going to have occurred to me though that we will be expanding outwards in that direction and so this is actually going to be sort of at the back of the area but that doesn't really matter. This is where the heart of the base is going to be, where all the automation and things sort of just connect together so to speak and it's also going to be grid aligned this is going to be the room sort of size right here this is going to be the glass floor this is the only time that we're going to go down underground my plan is to keep the entire base above ground and we're going to do some unique stuff that I'll get to later on but generally I want to do building above ground and not take the easy road which is to go underground but this is the exception because we're going to have lots of wires and things going all over the place in this room so this will be the base floor there'll be space below that we dig away and it's grid aligned if you have a look at where the torches are it's sort of lined up with them and that's something that I did with this place over here and I think all of our buildings are going to line up to the grids so when we place it down 
buildings will always be an odd width and they'll be in the middle of one of these torch grids so that things will line up nice and neatly, which is always cool. Uh, but anyway, going back to this thing right here, we're about to jump into a mod called Refined Storage. I've had many people requesting that I use this and asking why I haven't used it. It's because I've taken the time to learn it a little bit and Biffa gave me a crash course on what to do as well. And I want to explain it to you in a way where you could follow along and learn how to do this mod if you haven't done so yourself. So there are some things that you're going to need. This material right here gets used a lot, quartz enriching iron. By the way, this is the refined storage mod we're looking at on the side. So if you want to get into this, you need to have iron and quartz readily available. And also these things get used a lot right here. So iron, gold, diamond and silicon. Uh, that's not actually silicon. What have I clicked on? <laughs> Silicon also gets used a lot as well, and now we've got some pesky magma cubes coming in. So silicon is made from quartz, and with those materials you end up crafting a lot of the stuff that you see right here. So being prepared is always a good thing, and what we start off is by making the controller. So there's that silicon, there's a diamond, and there's the quartz enriched iron. And we want to hook this up to a power source, so I'm going to plop it on top of this thing, and it's going to be powered up and ready to go, and it can see the things that are connected to it, which is pretty cool. Now this is a system for storing items, and it is pretty powerful, but one of the first things we need to make to see our items is the grid. And this requires some stuff that goes into a rabbit hole of crafting and making things. But as Biffa pointed out to me, you can kind of get everything that you need using these solderers. So what you want to do is chuck basically a stack of these into uh, each of the solderers. And they're going to make many of the parts that you're going to need to craft. And so with our diamonds, our iron, gold and silicon, we'll have many of the basic things we need to craft the next stage. Diamonds probably not so necessary, but you can see with these ingredients, we're going to start to solder the improved processor. We need two of those for the grid and if we change the top one to iron then we get the basic processor and that's what you need to craft these things right. So it's not quite as confusing as you look if you just plan a ahead a little bit and get all of these materials prepared. So there is our construction core. That one goes at the top, the destruction core at the bottom and the improved ones on either side. That gives us our grid. Now this is where things get really really interesting. I'm going to put the grid on top of this thing, I've already forgotten the name of it, the controller of course. And now we can look into here and we will be able to see items that are connected to the network. Now the next step might be to make disk drives or disk drive store, I forget what it's called. <laughs> well there are disk drives that can basically store items as data, right? So that'll store a thousand stacks of things I do believe. And there it is, the disk drive, that's what it's called. And you can see there, that uses the diamond so that would be nice and easy to make now. Uh, but we're not going to do that first of all. What I'm going to do is connect some of our other things to this. So somewhere in one of these I have... Well, ironically, I couldn't find my sack of holdings, which I'll be able to do very easily with this thing because we can search for it. But I did manage to find one. So we're going to pick this up, move it a little bit closer for now so we can see what's going on here. And we want to attach an external storage cable to this. Right, and this is going to attach it to the system. So crafting this thing, not too difficult. We've encountered all of these so far. Again, that little bit of preparation with the solders goes a long way. Now when we go in here, we can see everything that is inside that storage unit. How cool is that? Then we can start to search for things like ingots. Now we can see all the ingots that are in there. Although, aren't those ingots as well? No, it's just pulsating iron actually. It doesn't have ingot attached to it. So this is extremely powerful. Then we can take things out and we can put them back in and I think at the moment if we were to put other items in like iron and sand because it's the only place it could go to it would appear in here right yes it does look at that the iron and sand is there so that is extremely powerful we're now going to attach all of this stuff that we have right here into this system and after that we can start to look at disk drives so as I'm crafting up bits and bobs for the next stage I've also been working on the area around here and this building is basically going to be like the hub for doing things. So the reason we've got this glass floor and a little bit that goes underground is because I'm going to put lots of machines down here and things that you would run around accessing when you do your crafting. And so this storage system is like going to be the heart of that as we can access everything right here. Now you'll notice that there is a lot of items and that's because I've hooked them all up uh, using these things back here. What are they called again? External storage. When you click on them it also shows you how full the inventory in front of it 
is, which is pretty cool, and it's been extremely convenient just to search for what I need in here. Like, I was low on redstone, and now that I can search for everything at once, I just found a load of it, which was really cool. So I didn't have to go mining again, and I've crafted two things, the disk drive and the crafting grid. As always, you can look these things up, but basically, they're using most of the stuff that I've covered so far. So if we attach them to... I don't think it needs to go directly next to that block, but let's put that in there first of all. It should now be a part of the network. Yep, crafting grid. And when we go here, we've now got a grid that also has a crafting table. But I do want to open up this one again and uh, point out that this is auto-selected. So when you open it, you can just start typing straight away, which is something you couldn't do before. You had to click up there. So there are various different search modes here. Um, like if I type now like this, it also does the JEI over here. So extremely useful and powerful tools right here, which are great for the modded experience. And what we're going to do is put down a disk drive as well, that's correct, and now we need a disk to put in here. So to show you the power of the crafting grid, what we're going to do is type at refined storage over here, and we're going to look for a 1K storage disk. Now, if I click on this, like press R, and then shift click move items, it puts them into here and it finds them in our storage network. So all of the items are there, I crafted this thing, and like that we can just walk over here and craft the thing, which is extremely useful. And as soon as I did that, I was wondering, maybe having multiple ones in a row would be useful because you could take the middle component, have it automatically set up here and drop it back into the storage, open another one of these, and then you've got the next bit along, right? So this stuff can be very, very powerful, that's for sure. But anyway, we've got our storage now. It means we can put this in here and we can store items in it. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. This is some sort of filter thing. I need to put it there. And now we have a thousand storage spaces. Right, and this thing's been disconnected, so we know it's going to go in there, but I'd like to see if it prioritizes it. So we put in six items, and now you can see six out of a thousand. Right, so it's not a thousand uh, stacks, as I speculated earlier. It's a thousand items that it will store. So now what I want to do is there's my cables, put that back, and see if it prioritizes them. Um, so if we chuck those in this time, does it go there? It doesn't, so it's gone somewhere else instead, even though that's sort of closer. So this is an example of why this stuff is so great. I want to make a capacitor bank and if we shift click this you can see that we're missing some basic capacitors. So then we can do the same thing again. We can make three of those, put them back into the system and then load up our capacitor bank again and now we can craft it immediately which is pretty cool. Now we need to put that down here next to where we're generating power and I'd really like to start rearranging this stuff and putting it in this work area down below but I just don't know quite how that's going to work out at this point in time and what we should be able to do is to put this thing into there and it charges it excellent so RS power isn't an actual power or something that you can generate it's a medium between other types of power so RF can be converted into RS which is pretty cool and this thing the wireless grids is a wireless way to access our storage so if we put down a wireless transmitter on one of these cables then we will be able to access all of our items on the go, supposedly. What have I what have I missed here? <laughs> uh, something I've done wrong. Ah, I think I have to do that. I think I have to link it. And now, there we go, access to the grid. Notice how the items here are a little bit different from what we've seen before. I think that's because it's arranging them by name. Interesting. Uh, descending, ascending. One of them is to sorting type. There it is, quantity. Aha, so that's the normal view that we get. And yeah, wireless access to this thing now, although it does have a charge. For what it is, I'm not sure if it's when you're opening it or when you're changing stuff or taking items in and out, like that has used some power. Uh, but it's pretty cool. But if we go further away, you'll see that eventually we won't be able to access it. Its range is 16 blocks. Now, I think what you could do is run a cable along and put a transmitter like further away, and then that way you could be further away from this, uh, but you can also get some upgrades for this thing as well. I'm assuming that they go in there, and then you'll be able to increase the range. Aha, there it is. It's added eight more blocks, so I'm going to guess with another three, we could add another 24, which is pretty good range, 84 in total. This nice and easy to make, by the way. There's also a speed upgrade as well, which I could put into the solderer, and then make these things run faster. So that's not everything in this mod. There's a fair bit more to go through, and we're not going to go through everything in this episode, but 
Another couple of things I'd like to talk about are the constructor and the destructor. So the constructor can place blocks, the destructor can break them. And this is extremely cool because we've got a little vanilla cobblestone generator here and it will break the block when it's below it, which is pretty cool. It's actually pretty fast at doing that, but the vanilla generation of the cobble is kind of slow. So let's try and pick this thing back up without it going into lava. Now you tend to place it onto a block, so if we do... Aha, you were in the way. If we do it like that and place it on the side, it will break pretty much instantaneously. And now you can sort of see how fast it is when I just stand here and place them. Um, but anyway, if we are if we are generating cobblestone in this system... Uh, by the way, this item is then being picked up and sent into the system by the destructor. If we're generating cobblestone, we can make machines to then generate sand, which means it's easier for us to get all of the sandstone for our building. Now, I know we're in a desert, but... You know, you can't mine all of it away. We want to leave some of it here for looks. So being able to generate this stuff is pretty good, and it will probably lead to generating other types of blocks as well. So I am rather sick and unwell, as you might know. I've been talking about it in other videos. Uh, and generally, I don't like to make the video about, you know, something other than Minecraft itself. But I've just gotten to this point where I'm starting to feel exhausted. My voice is worn out. I do need to rest it. And I didn't get as far as I wanted to with this. I wanted to get the machines down below. And I don't think we're going to get that done. I've just been working on the floor. And I don't know what material to put in the middle here. Because I don't want to use one of our free again. Uh, but just look at that. Like I think, I think it's cool. I've got a feeling the orange and the green won't be too appealing to a lot of people. But I like that. And the brown stone at the back here is where we're going to put our machines. And then there's a little bit of space behind to wire them up. So a good example of what's great about these machines is this thing right here which is the importer so another thing that's nice and easy to make I've configured this so that it will export this stuff down at the bottom which means when I want to smelt something like some brownstone I can chuck it in and then it automatically gets sent back into the system so while I've been down here I've been smelting materials and then using the wireless grid to pull out the things that I want to change and so rather than walking around going back and forth you're doing it all from this place but the idea is that we'd end up with let's say four of these things and there'd be in like a little section over here and we could walk up to them to do that and then everything always goes back into our main system so we'll probably have several grids around the place as well and then this is going to be like our master control terminal and as I was saying this was sort of the plan to get a few of those machines in place but I have been resting not feeling too great and I think that means that it's probably a good time to wrap up the episode here but I would like to just finish that floor first of all and there it is quite bland and plain and the grey doesn't complement the rest of the room I thought it'd be simple just to throw in a plain texture but actually it's not and I think what we should probably do is take the glass, mirror it down here, and then put something underneath the glass. So to give you more of an idea of what's to come, there will be like a building with diagonal slopes going up on either side. So this will be a room where you're on the inside. And actually, I kind of pictured like the above and below both being full of machines, but I think that might be difficult to have them up here. And you probably don't want to walk up and down a lot as well. So it may just be that all of our terminal stuff is actually just down in the, that area, and the top area is for show. So I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. I feel like I got my point across with the law and I like how this turned out right here and I hope you guys like the idea as well. And that's kind of all I've got to say really. It's time for me to go rest. Uh, if you've enjoyed the episode, please do leave a like. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.